Okay, so this is take three. Hi, Elvi. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> How are you doing today? <laughs> Great, thank you. Hello. Are you doing? <laughs> we are near Lake Arrowhead here in California, and on our way back from the Mammoth Lakes, uh, we decided to stop by this amazing. A uh, spot where our friend Brian is camping for, I think he's gonna be here for like 14 days. And uh, we just uh, decided to hang out with him. We are lucky enough to have time today to be together yes. and show off my van. It's a little van tour day. Yeah. You so, mentioned how long you've been living in a van. On and off uh, for seven years. But uh, really my lifestyle, I've lived on a lot of different boats. RVs, vans. Uh, wow. I am nomadic by nature. <laughs> That's cool. And I love it. Gosh, the idea of staying in one place too long is its just not for me. And I feel very fortunate that over the years I've uh, had a chance to see so many great places and there's mo so much more to see. So you n now you are full time in a van, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. While I uh, just going through a little uh, repairs over here <laughs> and uh, so while I'm uh, going through physical therapy, uh, healing from some injuries, figured uh, while I have the time, see some of the great parks, see what uh, our land has to offer, and hopefully meet some wonderful souls and good people along the way. Well, let me introduce you to a 94 GMC Vandura. Uh, it's a conversion to the high top. Uh, the conversion was done by Geneva. Picked her up about seven years ago. She was in great shape. I'm the third owner from two previous families that took really good care of her. So I feel very fortunate to have an original. And uh, on the outside, I try to keep her fairly original. Uh, stealth was part of my game because uh, I, I was working in cities and uh, people get scared sometimes when they see vans with uh, stuff all over it. So I try to keep it very original, very simple, clean. In fact, uh, there are 200 watts of solar on the roof. You may not even be able to see. Which yeah, is, yeah, yeah, it helps to stay stealthy. You don't see him from here. That's, you know, that's what I was going for. Uh, just clean and original. Mechanically speaking, uh, got to take care of your maintenance. Uh, luckily, I have a Chevy 350, the 4L60E transmission, which both engine and transmission are the most common in the country. So parts are available, and that's really nice. Everything's been gone through from the rear axle rebuild, suspension, steering, cooling radiator, heater core, I, I could go on and on, but I just can't stress enough how important it is to have a well-maintained van. You will sleep better. So what is it in your hood? Oh yeah, we have a, uh, yeah, this is my uh, magnetic lantern for the campsite, which can be moved around as you need. Oh, you can hang it, this thing yeah. on a branch or something. And above there's the also table. a hook on the bottom or the magnets or the handle. It's the little things that make is it battery operated or you got to charge the thing? It is battery operated. I try to use items that uh, are rechargeable, USB rechargeable, but sometimes hey, you need to get a couple uh, double A's. Well, uh, if you notice the windshield cover really keeps the heat from radiating off your windshield into the van. Uh, I just can't, uh, maybe 25 degrees cooler Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> They're custom made about $50. All you need to do is enter your model and year and they'll ship you a perfect fit. For whatever model you have, they fit perfectly. I uh, bought my brother uh, one for his Sprinter uh, for Christmas and uh, he was very happy. Okay guys, we're gonna put a link in the description below of all the things that we mentioned here that might be useful for you to check out. Well, I've spent a lot of time in cold weather and I've added a block heater that uh, I can plug in to avoid cold starts. And it's a lot of little things like that will add a lifetime to your engine. Cold starts are terrible. Hot, warm oil, warm coolant, yeah, it really helps. They're cheap and easy. How much was it? $15. But uh, you gotta crawl under and uh, there's a little bit of an installation. There are a few different models. You can have an oil pan heater. Uh, you can have a block heater, which heats the coolant. Um, and this runs both. It runs to both uh, an oil pan heater and a block heater. So how long did it, does it take to warm the engine before you start? Depending on the weather, but if it's sub zero, if it's freezing temperatures, yeah, a couple hours. Uh, but it's the kind of thing you would plug in the night before and just leave it going all night long. And then uh -huh. in the morning, you get up and your engine will be very happy. Can you like run your extension cord from off of your battery in the 
work it up? Good question. I, you know, I don't even remember the wattage. That was installed when I was uh, living in an apartment, so I would pull into the driveway of my own home uh -huh. and plug into my own home. So I, you could run it off the battery, but that amount of time I'd probably deplete most of my okay, battery. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I was lucky enough to find center line rims. Uh, these are nostalgic, special. The bolt pattern is a little unusual, so when I found these, I jumped on it and drove a few hours to make sure I got them. And uh, there's nothing like a nice set of shoes for your van. So this conversion van came with a limited slip in the rear axle, which is a big deal. It adds two tires as opposed to the one spinning. I can get across a muddy field. I can get up an icy road. It's not a four by four, but I've, uh, I do have some clearance and I've managed with caution, I've managed to get through some trails and get up some steep, sandy s slopes. Uh, a limited slip is a game changer. So I recommend that, I really do. And I was lucky enough that it came that way from the, uh, from the conversion factory. Over the seven years, I've gone through a lot of tires. You get what you pay for. And uh, I was spending a lot of time in Colorado in the winter, so I decided to get some very aggressive mud tires. And uh, they were nice. I got a lot of compliments, and I charged right through the snow. It was actually impressive. But the vibrations from those mud, those big aggressive treads, uh, vibrated the front end so much that uh, the tie rod ends, steering arms, everything just started to wear out and the steering wheel was all over the place. Any kind of wind was blowing me all around. And uh, like first we just replaced this item, we would replace that item for a few hundred dollars here, a few hundred dollars there, and it would come back. And it wasn't until I had the whole front end rebuilt, bushings, ball joints, tie rods, the works, um, including the wheel bearings, brakes, and now she drives straight with wind and uh, it, it means a lot. I, I, she drove one hand, she just, she tracks really well down the highway. That, that's, so. that's because of other, these tires, right? These are not the ones that you put, the mud ones, right? These are other kinds well, of These tires? are now street to regular street tires that have nice highway characteristics. The uh, aggressive mud and snow tires were good in the snow, but not on the highway. Uh, so yeah, be cautious of that if you do want to get some mud tires. Those vibrations are gonna wreak havoc on your old suspension components. I also have uh, blackout windows. Uh, you know, in van life, everyone has a choice. Do you want windows or not? There are pros and cons either way. I love windows, but for me, they need to be blacked out. And I have a, an ins every window has an insulation panel. It's a uh, the Home Depot quarter inch foam, not poly iso, but the, just a quarter inch foam, uh, along with uh, a dark fabric. So it doesn't look, I don't like the look of like Reflectix in, in, in the window. So even though it's a dark fabric and it can absorb color, I, for stealth, uh, it looks like a tinted window, but then I have the foam board behind it and uh, it's removable. That's the beauty of it. I can remove the foam boards and have a 360 degree view because sometimes I am in a place like this where I want to look out the windows. But other times you need to hide the, you know, if you're in the city and you're going stealth mode uh, and also for the weather, uh, the insulation makes a big difference. And for stealth mode, uh, keeping the light in the van as opposed to people seeing that there's somebody in there. Just keeping a low profile. I don't want to bother anybody. I don't want people to be alarmed. There's nothing to worry about. Well, let's, uh, let's go inside. And there have been some changes cleaned up the door panels. Added a little cabinet here, which uh, I cut into the door panel. A little so, table for cooking stove. Or set up the bar. <laughs> and a little paper towel roll underneath, which, oh, I'm so happy with that. That's so nice to have. Um, wow, well, what about this blinds? Are they working? Yeah, our blinds work. Just slide up oh, and yeah. down. And that's original. You know, the nice thing about these windows, you can open them if there's a little bit of rain. The, rain, the water doesn't come in, but you still get ventilation. And I think a previous owner did that, but you can hide the cup holder. Welcome aboard. First off, swivel seats are a must. It really opens up the space. It ties the whole room together, as the dude yeah. would say. Uh, and this seat was originally located behind the driver's seat, removed the bracket, brought it over here, figured out 
where it needs to be in order to have full recline, which ended up being seven inches back, three inches in, and uh, that's her home. Yeah, this is my main, uh, my recliner, and uh, I have my laptop, I can put my TV there, I can work. Um, I have a folding table here, which folds out. I like to keep this area clear. It's a lot easier to walk into the driver's seat um, as opposed to climbing over a center console, cup holders, which they're useful, but I do like having this clear. So the uh, center console in the doghouse uh, did a little bit of work on it. Basically used truck bed liner spray, took everything apart, cleaned, very happy. When the heater core was replaced, uh, the dashboard had to come off and that's when we got the gray color on it. Originally there was a small 13 inch TV that's been removed, adds more storage. And now this 24 inch with the DVD and it runs on 12 volt, so that's, that's great. And uh, being a smart TV, I can screencast from my phone, from the drone. Yeah, there's, I mean, my, my shower towel and then just some, honestly, these are junk drawers. I've got all this space and I could use it so much better, but. Uh, How do you put those, by the way? It goes all the way forward. Oh, shoot. Yeah, you should have seen all the drugs I used to stuff up in there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a good two pounds. Yeah, you gotta have tunes on the road, and uh, I like my bass. But uh, yeah, the Harmon Carden, it, it's a full sound, and even on the campsite, it fills up the forest. Some people may not like that, <laughs> but uh, most of the time, actually, the next morning, I've had some people come over and say, hey, thanks for the tunes last night. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad they weren't complaining. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love the speaker. Now, a lot of people have Max Air fans. They're great. I wanted to maintain the headliner that came with the uh, lighting and the woodwork. Didn't want to cut into it yet. Uh, so I just use a fan. Uh, it's AC, my batter bank can handle it. So anytime I just turn on that fan and I can place it strategically. Well, well we're gonna move on to the cabinet pretty soon. Yeah, uh, this is my kitchen cabinet. For a sink, I'm using a laundry tub. You can find it at Home Depot. Turn it sideways. The dimensions work great for me. The only problem is it's so big, I've now used it as a storage unit. <laughs> so it's not so much of a sink anymore. But uh, yeah, you can wash your dogs in here. Can you, can you show the inside? Yeah, well, I got a bunch of crap in there right now. Ooh. Okay. Well, but it's storage huge. unit. And uh, <laughs> you still have uh, running water. You can use it as a sink whenever yes. you want. Water pump switches here. I have a seven gallon gas tank right there. Uh, there's a five gallon gray water inside that I can pull out and, and empty. So uh, what's funny, these panels, it's laminated wood, these are bookshelves from Home Depot. Each one is maybe four, four or five dollars and the dimensions worked out perfectly. They come pre-laminated and I had a few other edges and sides I chopped up and uh, built a cabinet. There's the pantry and uh, you know, it's, I found these tubs with the little side doors on them to access. But if I need to pull them all the way out, I can access a lot more storage back there. This is my solution to a pantry and it's locked. All right, the best part about this sink. Uh, originally, we had a small cooler that would fit, the liquor bottles would be right across, the mixers would be right here, and then the plastic cups would stack and everything was contained in the sink. You could make your drinks, spill all you want. Yeah, Everything was the whole, the mobile bar, and the, every, and uh, the sink is so deep that the bottles, if you ever wanted to cover it up, the the, the panels covered over the bottles, and it, you had no idea there was a bar there. <laughs> and then you pull the panels off, and there was a full bar, mixers, booze, ice cups, and it worked. And then and people weren't spilling all over my nice carpet. <laughs> uh, but these days now, I'm not doing that so much. I don't have any uh, drawer pulls and locks. Uh, I have a way to open this, which gives us access to more storage. You can see the water pump, little 12 volt pump. And there is a five gallon gray tank inside here that I can pull out and drain. Jabsco, the Jabsco 12 volt. Let's talk a little about electrical. Uh, the first step, I have a battery parallel switch to connect my engine battery, which is an Optima yellow top with the house bank, a Renogy 200 amp hour AGM battery. Uh, I would like to be able to afford lithium, but I went with AGM and it's working great. It's nice having a starter battery that's also a deep 
cycle. Uh, so that's what we went with the yellow top Optima battery. The battery parallel switch can connect the two battery banks if you need. It's really an emergency, but yeah, sometimes it's nice to be able to connect the two battery banks if you need, uh, it, if you've let one run down. On top of the roof, I have 200 watts of solar going through Victron, and I am a huge fan of Victron. The Bluetooth app, the, the way you understand your consumption is so helpful. So Victron solar charge controller and a Victron shunt, which is a battery voltage monitor. And I have a 1,000, only a 1,000 watt inverter. Uh, originally, I had a 1,000 watt generator, the Honda 1000 and everything I bought was to be under 1,000 watts. It was stolen, best thing that ever happened to me. And that's when I got into the solar and really learned and built my own system. Thanks to Will Pros, that was good information. So yeah, uh, all my devices, I have a 700 watt microwave. And in the past, I don't like microwaves, but here in van life, it's very practical. And I hate it, but I, I love it and I hate it. So here's where I have the microwave and I can store a lot of stuff underneath what was the original bench. And I've uh, custom, I had a custom mattress built to fit right on top of it. However, this can be configured differently. Uh, this mattress can be removed and just go back to the bench style if I want to have passengers. I can also fit a queen size mattress. This cabinet was built to stop just far enough so that a queen size mattress will fit underneath. Uh, so it's nice to have a custom mattress. I sleep really very well. Uh, great linens blankets and an electric blanket that uh, I picked up. Ignic, the best thing about it is the low energy consumption. It's 12 volt or USB, so you can't even run it off a of five volt USB if you have a, um, a little power bank meant to recharge your phone or laptop. In the effect, there's a little zipper pocket. You can put your power bank in it, plug in the USB and stay warm. Very low energy draw. And it does work. This is my socks and underwear. And then I have more clothes, shorts, things, the kind of clothing that you would uh, fold. And then there have some backpacks, toiletries are all back there. Well, this is a little storage unit uh, right around the wheel well. And there's a, a cubby down in there. You keep all kinds of whatever you need. You've gotta have your fire extinguisher, trash bags. Target has these Ottomans, love it, storage. And when I'm sitting in my favorite chair, I can put my feet up. In the back, I've got the fridge and my uh, clothes that I like to keep on a hanger. I'm not a bum. I like nice, crisp, clean clothes. Welcome to the bedroom. But nearby, I keep my refrigerator in case I uh, get thirsty. I can get whatever I need. The fridge is placed in just the spot that this clicks right there. And yeah, you didn't need to haul it, you just dig in. Yeah, the nice thing about this fridge is it isn't permanently mounted and it has a long uh, 12 volt extension cord. And it's really nice sometimes to just pull it out of the van, put it in the campsite. Uh, or sometimes I'll put it on the back rack so it's off the dirt, but it's accessible to everybody uh, without having to come into the van, open the door, you know. I just, I like how it's not permanently mounted. Yeah. There's a lot of flexibility. So all of the headliner, the woodwork that you see, the, uh, the rack, these boxes, all came from Geneva, which was the conversion company. Uh, that added the high top and so this is all original um this is how it came by the way this rack idea was brilliant and what they did was saw angled recesses so that your clothes would take up less space and they wouldn't slide around uh, when you're mario andretti up and down the mountains now all these windows and the shades all the shades come up the insulated panels pop right out and I can have all these windows open and see the view when I want, or I can have the privacy when I need. That works for me. So this is the original stereo, which is just taking up space, does not work. So we'll do something fun with that one day. Storage. All that area is all storage? All the way, to, yeah, from, from uh, edge to edge. Wow. Although it's a small door and uh, yeah, it's hard to. And this is the main breaker for the solar coming uh, through the roof. If I ever need to uh, service. So this is the uh, headliner. There's, there is a recessed lighting and that came with the original conversion. And at night, it's nice to have the recessed lighting that sets the mood. I do have reading lights. Uh, this one is LED, which obviously is great for low consumption, but it's so bright, it's too bright. 
And that's why I'm happy leaving the rest of these as the incandescent uh -huh. yellow lights. I like that mood. I like that yellow warm lighting. But this particular one, I like to have the brightness over yeah. the workspace. And the fact that I can just leave it on all night if I forget, uh, it's such a low consumption that I don't worry. I was, yeah, I went on one of the road trips. Uh, we were going to be near some rivers and uh, bought a fishing pole, had some fishing gear. We had a lot of fun. Uh, but now it's more of a decoration. <laughs> uh, this is actually not a decoration. Just in case anybody knocks on the door or breaks in, it's not gonna work out so well. Don't sneak up on me <laughs> when I'm sleeping. It clips like it would on a belt, but uh, underneath. Oh, okay, okay. It, as if it was gonna clip on your belt. I, don't, I hope I never have to do that. Hope so too, man. Can you stand? Pretty close. <laughs> but if I'm working, you know, if I'm doing something over here, I don't really need to have my head up, but it, it's enough. Well, I have uh, AC run throughout, uh, so I basically run surge protectors to different locations. Uh, I can charge here. Uh, I have another surge strip there. And then off the uh, center console, there's a cigarette lighter, a bunch of USB coming off that. So I have outlets throughout and it's just nice to have electricity and not have to worry about it at all. So you're only running things from the solar, from the 200 watts and it's enough for even for the microwave? It, it really is. Uh, the 200 amp hour AGM battery and, and only 200 watts on the roof allows me everything. And I rarely get below 80%. And I'm running the microwave maybe 10 minutes a day. Uh, the rinse kit, I run that in the mornings to heat up the water. Yeah, the refrigerator runs nonstop. All my electronics are charged and I rarely get below 80%. And I'm back at 100% by 9.30, 10 in the morning. This system works for me. Let's check out the garage. Welcome to the back end. I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of my little cargo rack. One thing I like, I really like about it is I don't have to put stuff on the roof. It keeps my wind profile low. I had a welder weld a receiver so I can add a bike rack. <laughs> and it sticks out pretty far, but it works really well. So I'll have a few boxes, whatever I need, firewood, all the camp chairs, whatever you want to pile up here, and the back, the bike rack hanging off the back. So yeah, cargo <laughs> rack with the uh, receiver welded on is uh, a pretty cool trick. And uh, I still have clearance for my doors to open. Or if I want to use my rinse kit, take a little, get a little cleaned off. <laughs> I think it's out of order. Yeah, it's, it's out of order. order. <laughs> this is the bunk. And the lid comes off. You can set it on the ground. If you're bathing, you can stand on it and oh, wash yourself yeah. off without having to stand in the mud. So how do you, how do you use it? Like, Well, there's two ways to fill it. You can Fill it from a garden hose or a faucet using the city pressure, fills it and pressurizes it. If you're outdoors, there's a plug you open up, fill it with water, and there's a hand pump to build the pressure. There's also an electric heater, plug into your 12-volt cigarette, mm -hmm. cigarette lighter and uh, get warm water. And it uses very little electricity. So basically you can use it to wash your dishes with a warm water, wash hot your dog. water, wash your dog, wash yourself. I love the rinse kit, actually. It's really nice. Well, the name of my van is the Heart and Soul. The Heart and Soul. Which was the name of the first boat I captained, and that is the placard from the wheelhouse of that boat, so I'm keeping the spirit alive. We had a lot of fun uh, cruising around California on just with the family. That was the Heart and Soul. It means a lot. Well, I chose the winter fridge. They're all pretty great. All the DC fridges are wonderful. Along with this one. I've had her almost four years. It runs all the time. I never turn it off. I can have it down to negative eight degrees and it will freeze everything. Be careful. Um, or I can set it. It's very accurate with this temperature setting. Uh, what we have is the 45 quart winter and that's a lot of volume. You would be shocked and how much you can fit in there. If I uh, load up with food and beverage, I mean, I could uh, stay out for three weeks. And uh, it's easy to pack because of the baskets. You can just pull the baskets right out, load everything in as you want, drop the baskets right back in. I, 
I'm so happy. You must have a fridge. Whatever it takes, get a fridge. Don't do the cooler. Don't let the ice melt and get everything wet. Please get a fridge. It's the best. Uh, I've added the shelf for two reasons. To, to put my tools underneath and to elevate it to a nice height so that when I'm in bed, I can uh, reach everything a lot easier. You can see my tools. My solar setup is underneath the bed. I have the, uh, the battery with the inverter controllers, fuse blocks. So the original bench is still in the van. These switches will raise and lower from couch mode or into bed mode. It will slide the whole couch assembly forward or back uh, almost two feet. So I can put it into sofa mode or couch mode or bed mode, excuse me, or I can slide the whole assembly forward or back. So if I ever really wanted to, I can pull the fridge, pull the mattress, and it'll go back to the original configuration, which is a two-way facing bench, kind of like the old station wagons, where three people in the back would face backwards and four people could sit on the bench facing forwards. Uh, so I can fit seven people. Maybe not be legal. Which is why I go back to the no, it's a no build. Uh, and some people remove that bench in order to build a structure for the bed. Yes, you will get more storage space, but uh, I really like having that bench. For the times when you want to transport a lot of people, just yank the mattress out, you're back in the bench mode, and you can seat a lot of people back there. Uh, so that's my recommendation, works for me. One of the changes I uh, made, I was using this rack a lot, traveling a lot, and I didn't want to get pulled over because my license plate was blocked. So I've added a different license plate mount with a light that makes it legal. Uh, and that way, no matter what I pile up out here, uh, I am in compliance with the law. Just how I like to roll. Can you tell us a little bit about this one gallon vodka tank? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> my, my, my vodka tank. Yes, it's very important van life. You Is have to have a vodka to tank. The faucet? <laughs> it's, it's direct tap. And so, yeah, it just, you know, when you need a little help, <laughs> you get a little vodka. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. All good. Funny. <laughs> I am not, yeah, I'm not here for the camera. <laughs> You're great, you are great. Oh, okay, man. Have you seen us in front of me? You are awful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love you. Like, you are so good, really. <laughs> <laughs> but this is good, this is my first time. Yeah, I'll get better. I promise, I promise I'll get better. <laughs> <laughs>